Rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Salik Shirazi. Inshallah, this season we'll be also looking at different other maraja and their verdicts on similar topics. Joining me, as always, is Sheikh Ali Ma. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How's your Muharram going so far, Sheikh? You must be busy uh, reciting and going to Majalis and everything. Alhamdulillah, Allah in Muharram and Safar, the act of marriage, actually the, the actual nikah, the aqad, um, is it permissible to have the the aqad, the, the just the, the nikah, the you know the exchange of vows or, or the, the contract, to have this read during Muharram and Safar? Because Muharram and Safar isn't really a month of happiness and joy. But at the same time, we know uh, that even in the Battle of Karbala, um, Qasib ibn Hassan, السلام, he, his mother wanted him married and was very, very, um, you know, persisting that you know he should be married and and so forth. So, we, on one hand, we have you know the importance of marriage and even a marriage to take place on the Battle of Karbala. On the other hand, we are there as the Shia community. Mourning and grieving over the death of Abu Abdullah al Hussein during Muhammad, Muharram and Safar, can we actually have an aqad, a, a small? I'm not saying to go out and celebrate, but I'm just saying maybe two people want to get married. Can we have the nikah ceremony done? Um, you know, this uh, Sayyid Ayatollah Sayyid uh, Sistani, does he have something to say on this regard? Inshallah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi wa tayyibin wa tahirin Allahumma salli ala Allah Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad Azamallahu ujuruna wa ujurakum um, With regard to this question about uh, having uh, the nikah contract or the marriage contract during the Muharram and Safar uh, season which is the season of Aza' and lamentation on the Martyrs of Karbala and Ahl al-Bayt alayhim salam Ayatollah Sistani would mention that it is not appropriate for an individual to have such uh, acts in these munasabat and occasions in the sadic occasions uh, which is not suitable for, for these occasions um, However Ayatollah Shirazi would mention that um, there's a hadith which says يَحْزَنُونَ لِحُزْنِنَا the hadith it says that the, the Shi'as are the ones who would uh, be sad in our sad occasions. In other words, in their martyrdoms, we are sad. We uh, establish Aza, perform Aza Dari, and so forth. So any kind of um, the, the, the scenes and, and such like of happiness should be not in, this, in these two months of Aza. Uh, but he says, Ayatollah Shirazi that if it's just the aqid itself, just to make this young man, to this young man halal, instead of, na'udhu billah, calling in haram, then just the aqid by itself, without any kind of uh, celebrations, uh, in this case it is allowed, yes, there's no issue with it. Sheikh Na, previous episode we were looking at backbiting and we discussed uh, backbiting, what should one do if he's hearing someone backbite and so forth Let's continue our um, discussion And what if someone says something in regards to someone's character like I don't know, oh, um, you know, this person he's quite cheap Or he's quite, you know, uh, he doesn't like to spend money He's quite tight-fisted, uh, miserly, he's, he's very miserly Does this substitute for backbiting or is that, no, it's not backbiting? You see, even this type of statements um, is not permissible and because it may lead to insulting this mu'min. And um, the mu'min has a hurma, has a sanctity. So we cannot breach, have, you know, 
reach that stage in which this sanctity is, is in, in somehow taken away from this mu'min. So we have to uh, avoid breaching the sanctity of the mu'min and respect. And the best way is to always use the وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنَى as the Qur'an says, and say good words uh, to the people. So slandering, backbiting, lying, cheating, and so forth. These are, we have to, as a mu'min, stay away from this type of akhlaq and this type of mentality of always trying to slander people, to talk against people. You know, uh, our gatherings should be always bringing these individuals up and talk about it, either positive or negative. We have to try to avoid uh, talking against others. So we talk about what is beneficial for us, for the dunya and the akhirah. Sheikh, what if, you know, we're talking and, um, you know, we don't mention anyone's name. So, you know, we're talking to a third party and we're talking about an individual, but we don't mention his name, so no one really knows who this individual is. And then, you know, if they were to go investigate, they would, be, they would easily be able to find out who uh, was being slandered or who was being backbited about. What is, I mean, does that constitute as backbiting as well? I, there was no names mentioned. As long as there's no m names mentioned, I mean, even some ulama in their lectures or lessons would mention that someone, let's say, came to me and he said such and such, or I saw somebody doing such and such. They don't bring the name of that individual. So uh, without the name, that's fine. As for us to learn a lesson that there was an individual who committed this act of wrongdoing or sin, and then you know, there, there, there was a consequence afterwards. So you just bring this story without mentioning the name, that's fine. But to mention the name either directly or indi indirectly, that is something which you would have to avoid. Awesome. What if the individual gave permission for people to backbite behind him? Said, yeah, I don't care. Um, you know, you can backbite behind me. I don't really, I'm not, you know, it doesn't mean anything to me. It is still not permissible because that is against... Uh, the uh, um, the hurma of the mu'min, uh, the sanctity of the mu'min. Now, at the end of the day, he is a mu'min, he's a believer. Although he did these things, let's say, in his private life, but he doesn't mind people talking about it. No. Um, we cannot spread the, the, the fahisha, the act of uh, wrongdoing, into the society that, oh, listen, that individual did something in his privacy. And, he, and he's happy with it to be said, no, no, you can't. Mm -hmm. There are limits, there are red lines within, within the Sharia ah about these things, even if that individual allows for, for, for these things to be spread and said. No, uh, you cannot spread these things because that might uh, cause for corruption, for the spread of the fahisha and, and, and the wrongdoing. So we have to try to avoid, again, spreading these things, even if that individual he is happy with it and he is satisfied that his story is even mentioned in the newspapers. No, we have to try, try to avoid spreading uh, this type of wrongdoings within the uh, Mu'min community. Ahsant. Shaykhna, what about if you're backbiting like a sinner? Someone who, you know, is a sinner, and, but who doesn't manifest in his sins and, and his, his wrongdoings, his misdeeds. Um, is backbiting allowed in that situation or not? Um, no. You cannot backbite him except in the condition, as the state mentions, of forbidding evil. So, and of course, there must be criteria with, with the God that uh, uh, So, the one should uh, try to uh, revise the criteria of the munkar, forbidding evil, that when I apply this, so I can talk about this individual. If it, if it becomes forbidding evil, then that's out of the boundary of backbiting. Otherwise, you can't uh, backbite this individual. So you know, I've got a, a, you know, someone wrote to me and says, I tried to consolate between two families, but this required me to listen to both parties, which included slandering one another. 
Is this permissible for me, given that this is a precursor to making peace between them? So here we have a situation. We've got, you know, two parties. Someone's come to reconcile between the two. Normally it's, it's, it's a marriage when it comes to reconciliation, but it could be anything. Two parties, an individual's come to reconcile. He goes to one party, party A, to discuss. Party A is doing nothing but backbiting and slandering party B. He goes to party B to discuss. And party B is doing nothing but slandering and backbiting party A. This is kind of expected when trying to reconcile and trying to bring two parties back together. Um, is backbiting in that situation acceptable? What does the individual do? Because he is now, you know, open and he can hear um, the backbiting. Um, the ulama have exemption with this regard that if you want to do sulh and bring two sides, two sides, let's say a husband and wife, for example, uh, back to each other, then yes, you can. So in order to reconcile and bring those two parties together, yes, you can. In this case, uh, there is no uh, hurma or, or, or forbidden or a sin in, in this case because you try to uh, bring uh, to reform and bring those two parties together. So there's no issue with it. Ahsan, thank you very much, Sheikh. And thank you to all our viewers for watching Ahkam SOS. If you have a question that you'd like to ask Sheikh, you can contact us on Ahkam SOS at Imam Hussein 3tv Inshallah, the address should be at the bottom. And we look forward to hearing from your emails. And inshallah, we'll be seeing you on the next episode of Ahkam SOS. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Ah, 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 ah.